All right, Bridget has $113.94 in her checking account and she deposits her paycheck of $656.65. During the week, she goes to an ATM at 7-Eleven and withdraws $80. She's charged a usage fee of $250. She writes one check for rent for $450. An auto withdrawal comes out of her account for her sell bill for $45.13. What is her current balance in her checking account? So let's start with her starting balance of $113.94. And she deposits a paycheck, so that's going to be a plus. And then she goes to the bank, uh, sorry, the ATM at 7-Eleven. She withdraws 80, and there's a usage fee. So it's really like saying 8250. She writes a check for rent, so that's also going to be a subtraction. And then an auto withdrawal for the cell phone bill. And what is her current balance? So we're going to go do all these additions and subtractions and see what her current balance is. Minus 450, minus 4513. And so what she has left in her account is $192.96. All right. And you're always going to want to do the additions and subtractions twice, um, unless you're doing it on a Desmos type, you know, um, where you can see all of these transactions as they're happening. So $113.94 plus $656.65 minus 80, minus 2.5, minus 450, minus 4513, and so that looks good. Always double check your math before you're done. All right, in creating a monthly budget, Ms. Sanchez calculated her gross monthly income is 7,200. After listing all her expenses, that's all my paycheck deductions, my gross expenses were 6,227. Mrs. Sanchez's dad says you should save at least 10% of your gross monthly salary or you are living outside your means. Is she able to save, to save at least 10% of discretionary income of her gross salary monthly? So first let's do a subtraction here and see if I get a gross income of 7,200 and then all my expenses are 6,227. Let's subtract that and see what's left over. So we have 973 left over and we want to know if that's at least 10% of my income. 10% 10 of 7200 is 720. So we say yes, she has more than the 10% uh, of To be able to save Alright, James opens a savings account with the 1350 he received for graduation. The account pays 2.3% simple interest. What's the balance after five years? And so we notice that this says right here, simple interest. So we know we can go up to that banking sheet and use the simple interest formula. Do you remember it off the top of your head? You got it. I equals PRT. My principal that I'm investing is 1350. My rate, remember how we convert this, 0.023, you have to move the decimal twice, and then time is five years. And it says what is the balance. I'm about to get the interest and then we have to do a last step 
where the balance is equal to the interest plus the original principal. And so let's not forget to add that at the very end. So 1350 times 0 0.023 times 5. is $155.25 in interest plus the $13.50 will give me my balance. So $155.25. And then $1505.25. And that's my balance. Let's go highlight it. Okay. <clears throat> Hector deposits $27.50 the summer of eighth grade to save until college. If the savings account earns 3.5% interest compounded daily, what is the balance after four years? So now the top ones are the simple interest formulas. We're down here to compound interest principal times one plus the rate over n to the power of nt. And so just real quick, I wanna show you again, why did I go to the compound interest formula? because in the problem it said compound interest, and it's gonna tell us what this N is, how, how often we're compounding. So principal times one plus the rate over N, and this is gonna give us our balance, okay? My principal is 27.50 times one plus the rate, so I convert it, 0.035, converts to a decimal, and it says it's compounded daily. So down here, we're going to put 365 for daily compounding. To the power of 365 N, T is four years. So we now have this new variable N because of the compounding. So my balance is equal to, let's go plug this into Desmos, 2750 times 1 plus. 0 0.023, nope, I think it was 3.5, divided by 3.65 to the power and let's double check all our plugins, 0 0.035, 3.65, and 4. So we're going to have a balance of $3,163.23. Three one six three point two three. Is this coming back to you from the banking unit? Let's highlight the answer in yellow. Okay, Megan wants to go on a $2,000 vacation in one and a half years when she thinks COVID will finally be under control. She has a bank account that pays 3.25% interest compounded monthly. How much must she deposit each month? Here's the key word here. Each month, how much must she deposit to afford the vacation? So we're choosing between these bottom two formulas because of the key fact that it said each month, we know it has to be a periodic. 
one of these tells us a principal amount, how much, and one of these tells us a balance. So we want this guy right here because it tells us how much must she deposit in order to save that future amount. So we're going to start writing the formula B times R over N. all over one plus the rate over n to the power of nt minus one. And that's gonna give us our periodic deposit amount. So let's put in the balance we're going for. We're shooting for 2000. The rate is going to convert to a decimal of 0 0.0325 compounded monthly. To the power of, oh, sorry, no power on this numerator, over 1 plus the rate over 12. Here's where the power of 12 comes in, and we want to do this in 1.5 years. So it's 12 times 1.5 years. And then don't forget the minus one. Let's see how much I have to save to go on a $2,000 vacation. Uh, 1.5 years for the vacation. Let me go put that back in. Okay, so 2,000 vacation, 1.5 years, 3.25 interest, compounded monthly. Just want to double check my numbers. 3.25 monthly and 1.5. So we're looking good. So 108 and 58 cents rounded. must be saved monthly in order to go on that vacation. Last but not least, Alexis opens an account at Navy Federal Credit Union in order to save some money for culinary school. She's able to deposit $150 each week into an account that pays 4.25% interest compounded monthly. How much will she save in three years? So this time it asks, it says another periodic deposit, so we know we're looking at these again, but this time it asks for how much a balance. So this time we're going to use the B equals, and this has a double parentheses in it. Be careful. So here we go. P, uh, P stands for principal, again, of the periodic deposit amount. Double check our formula, P parentheses parentheses, one plus the rate over N to the power of NT minus one. Oops, sorry, wrong one guys, wrong one. This guy right here, P double parentheses double parentheses, one plus the rate over N to the power of NT minus one, all over the rate over N. Okay, looking good, we put in our principal amount we know we're going to be able to deposit 150 each month. One, and there's double parentheses there, one plus the rate, compounded monthly, to the power of monthly compounding, times three years, all over the rate, over 12. Let's go put this in Desmos.
all over the rate. Divided by 12. Okay, so if I put away 150 a month, 1 plus the rate over 12 to the power of 12 months times 3 years minus 1 over 0 0.0425 compounded monthly, I would have $5,748.52. 5748 5748.52. Okay, that's the review of our banking chapter and which formula to use when. All that could be on your final.